<laughs> Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. Uh, this is Scooter. He's sleeping. And this is three sheets with commentary. Like this, right? Yes. Like, like hey, that. Hey, Zane. <laughs> Hello, Zane. Uh, oh. And uh, pop-ups, like like that one right there. Uh, and trivia. Okay, this is <clears throat> this this is three sheets whales. Hello there, this is the professor telling you to go to adventure.com to get your three sheets merchandise, like the Plebeus t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. Let me tell you about my my job here. I uh, travel the world and um, explore drinking cultures in different countries. I go there and I drink. And um, it's also sort of my job to, um, other than the drinking, to, um, uh, <laughs> actually that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I drink a lot. Whoops. Uh -huh. Hi, can I get a towel? Yeah, room 901, thanks. You know, Michael Jordan had his flu game. This is my flu game. Of the five days that we shot in Wales, I had the flu for four of them and I was recovering on, on the last day. But the show must go on and we still had to shoot the Belgium episode and the Champagne episode after this. So we couldn't really delay anything and stop down for a few days for me to get better. So I just had to suck it up, nut up and shoot. Warning, if you're out drinking in Wales, you might run into this lady. And if you do, watch your crotch. Hey now, hey now he's the crotch of the party. You'll see more of her later, but first. Wales, home of the Welsh and part of the UK and a great place to drink. Yeah, there are more castles here per square mile than any other place on earth. And yes, they do speak a strange and ancient language with really long words that are made up of a bunch of syllables and hardly any vowels. But the reason I'm here is because of these places. Pubs. And there's definitely no shortage of them here in Wales. I'll go to a town where there's a pub on almost every block. I'll get my hands on a professional beer drinker's beakers. Excellent. Excellent. And we'll answer some questions. So who, are you the guy that's traveling around drinking in bars? No. Do they really serve this stuff at room temperature over here? And can a breakfast called cockles and lava bread cure a hangover? Find out when we go three sheets to Wales. Let's kick off this drinking binge. I'm gonna hurt myself. I don't say either one. By the way, if you think these kids are crazy for rugby, where do you see the grown-ups? In my quest to understand the world of Welsh pubs, I journey deep into the countryside of Wales to a thousand-year-old pub known to serve up death sentences and drinks to the devil himself. It's the Skirid Inn. Skirid Inn. And we're in, we're in Wales, of course. Yeah. And what, what part of Wales? Um, just outside Abergavenny in Monmouthshire okay. and in the village called Hang the Hangel Krukorni. Yeah, I don't really, I didn't get any of that, but I'm gonna take your word for it. Okay. Um, While talking to Samantha the barmaid, as she's called over here, I learned the word pub comes from the phrase public house. In the old days, townspeople would gather in public houses or pubs to eat, socialize, and drink beer. Public houses were also used as a location for resolving public matters. In fact, people would come here to watch criminals get hanged. The first hanging was uh, recorded at being 1110. Okay. So there's records of, you know, the building being here since then. And so pubs back in those days had hangings at them? Not all of them. Okay, all right, well, just, I guess just the lucky ones. Today, you can still see the rope burns on the crossbeam from the hangings. They say there's been roughly about 180 people hanged here over the years, and apparently uh, many a times they would get the people that had committed lesser crimes to actually do the hanging. And that's just, that's creepy. That's so creepy. Speaking of creepy, they call this thing the Devil's Cup. Folklore has it that you keep the devil at bay by offering him an occasional fill. 
can all breathe now. Everything's fine. On a more lighthearted... I'm often asked if I still have any of the bottles that I was given while shooting three sheets. The answer is no, not really. A few, but I do not have this bottle of whiskey, but I wish that I did because I remember it was very, very delicious. Pandaren, can you send me some whiskey? Thanks. This little country building is where it's distilled. If you were to take a swig of Pandaren, you'd notice it tastes a lot like Jack Daniels. And that's no coincidence. Even though the whiskey industry in Wales is small, it is the birthplace of a much larger whiskey bourbon industry in the States. Mr. Jack Daniels was a Welshman. Okay. But I'm not that up on the history. I, I, I believe it was 18th, 19th century. The, the chapels came to be in Wales. Right. And sort of people were, were not drinking as much, and therefore a lot of this distillery shut down. And the industry sort of moved to the Over southern. Your way. Yeah, yeah. To Tennessee, where Jack Daniels was founded. So the American bourbon industry has Welsh roots. Okay, so a pub where people were executed. Gross. But enough history. I'm ready to party. And I hear that one of the best places to do that is in a coastal village with a very strange name. In the 1100s, the Normans from Normandy settled here and named the town Mumbles. And they named the town after those two peaks right there, which they thought looked like boobs. Mumbles being their word for boobs, this being the town named after boobs. There you go. Let's go drink. Mumbles is probably best known for two things. Well, yes, but two other things as well. First, Catherine Zeta-Jones grew up here. And second, it's the site of a world-famous drinking pilgrimage called the Mumbles Mile. On any given day, you're likely to find people hopping from pub to pub along a stretch of road that's about a mile long and littered with pubs. Here, it's not about what you drink, most of the people here drink your typical varieties of mixed drinks and beers. A Corona? <laughs> All right, a Corona, please. In order to make the claim that you've done the mile, you need to hit 10 of the pubs along this route and have a drink in each pub. Can I do the mile? Come on, I'm Zane Lamprey, host of the world's coolest drinking show. Of course I can. The first pub on the route is called the White Rose. And let's just say that right now, things here are not so rosy. We were told that we could shoot in this pub during the rugby game between Wales and France. That was bad advice. I did think that it was not gonna go over very well. People came to get loose, to drink, and to watch the game, not to be interrupted by some stupid American TV show host. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? We stopped shooting here when the camera guy got spit on. We just walked outside and waited for the game to be over and then headed back in and talked with uh, with these guys. And Tom. So, so we were just watching the, uh, the game, the match. Tell us, tell us about it. France well, lifted at the end. Yeah. But we don't lose. Even though the Wales game is over, rugby fans continue to watch the next game, Ireland and England. Ireland scored! Because Ireland! Because we don't like England. Okay. Okay. I'm half Irish, half Welsh. Yeah. With Celtic. Yeah. English. You know. Watch your wankers. Enough of the regional squabbling. Let's get back to business. Be good. Thanks, guys. Love you, Mr. Five. Cheers. One pub down. Nine to go. Coming up, I meet a self-proclaimed unofficial Mumble Smile record holder. You must have been just pissed drunk after that, huh? And later, check out this guy. His job is almost as cool as mine. That was a real job, very okay. important part of the right, process. Sure. <laughs> Okay, so I'm in a town called Mumbles, where I've been hitting bars in my attempt to complete the famous Mumbles Mile pub crawl. At bar number three, I run into an accomplished miler. Uh, we're born and bred in the Mumbles. But, but you're saying he has a record for the quick, he has. quickest Mumbles Mile. Unofficial, but he's in the Mumbles. He's standing in tight here. It's just, you know, lost it. I got it, that's fine. What, what's the time on it? It's going to be about, what was it, an hour and ten? And, and so that, that's 10 pints? Yeah. And, uh, it's a pint in each pint. Okay, wait a minute. To clarify things, 
In the UK, they drink imperial pints, which are 20 ounces, as opposed to our 16 ounce pints in the States. That means he drank 200 ounces of beer in a little over an hour. That's about 13 pounds. That's twice the weight of my friend Steve McKenna's head. Or, another way of looking at it, that's about 16 and a half standard size bottles of beer. You must have been just pissed drunk after that. I was all over the shop. Was in a coma three days after. Were you? Yeah. I can imagine. Uh, and that's the Mumbles tradition. So yeah. It's a tradition. Another Mumbles tradition is this place. The Park Inn has been serving beer for a very long time. Uh, we've got it on a, an 1846 tides map, the old church map. So wow. It's at least 150, 160 years old, wow. I suppose. And, and it's been a pub all, all since. It was built as a pub. Wow, that's amazing. Kevin Martin is the owner, or landlord, as they say in Wales. And when it comes to serving ales, this guy is a purist. Hey, can you tell me about this? What's C-A-M-R? -C what is that? It's an organization to get rid of things like Foster's and your general lager yeah. and promote real ale back into the community pubs. So what is a real ale? Time for a Three Sheets Ale documentary. Let's start with a definition of ale. Ale is a type of beer that is top fermented, meaning it uses yeast which floats during fermentation rather than sinking to the bottom. So-called real ales are ales that are not pasteurized, meaning they continue to ferment inside the casks they're served from. All right, so now that we know what ale is, let's meet some people who actually make the stuff. The Brains Brewery has been in business since 1882. So I'm here with Stuart Dobson at the uh, Brains Brewery in Wales, in Cardiff. And uh, what do you guys make here? We make uh, about 100,000 barrels of ale. The thing about cask ale is that it contains live yeast, which generates alcohol okay. from the, the crushed barley ingredient. What okay. pasteurization does is cease that process, as opposed to real ale, there's a little bit of yeast left in the barrel, which keeps working, which gives it conditioning, a nice appetizing bubble. It's a perishable product, not unlike uh, milk, yeah. if you like, so from okay. the point at which the cask is breached, as we call it, you start pouring it in the pub, it really should be consumed within 48 hours. Here's a guy with a cool safety vest. I, I mean, job. <laughs> Almost as cool as my job. This man's job is to, to drink beer. Yeah, this stage in the process, we monitor the trueness to type of the product. OK. So we test each batch that we produce against our sort of reference mm -hmm. for the product should taste I, mean, like. I don't think I don't know if this is a real job or if you just made this up. No, it's a real job, very okay. important part of the right, process. Sure. <laughs> All right, you know, can I be Your the... Your gynaleptic follows. Fill out the application. Can I be the guy? Do you have a guy that sits yeah. around and drinks? It's a very long list. You yeah. might so way down. Yeah. <laughs> can I try your job? You can. Let, you me, like let me see. Let yeah. me see how... Because I... I don't know if, I, if I'll be able to get the hang of it. Just points. Yeah. That's pretty good. Let me... Just, you know what? I was... Stuart was talking, so I'm going to have to... <laughs> now he's laughing. I'm going to... Come on, they're going to be here all day. Did you say something while I was doing that? No, I didn't. All right, because somehow we're getting distracted. I'm going to have to. <laughs> that one's fine, but I might have to come back here. You might have a few more to do, yeah? Yeah, exactly. The Brains Ale has a distinct malty flavor, and that's no surprise when you consider what it's made from. Oh, okay. This is malt? Barley? Yeah, this um, you might recognize if you if you Muesli is a breakfast cereal. Yeah. It, it will be a constituent part of I have muesli when I have trouble. Uh, I'm, I'm constipated. Right? I mean, that's the muesli. Well, beer has uh, that conducive effect as well. Oh, it's, fantastic. Uh, very good for balance. I used to drink coffee to have a BM. Now I can just have a beer? Absolutely. This is great. This is so informative. Back at the park inn, I try my hand at pouring one of these so-called real ales. The casts that they come in are not pressurized, so you have to pump them by hand. So you're not using gas to get the beer, and there's no gas going into the beer. Okay. The gas is in the beer, it's a natural Wow, that's, that's a hard pull, man. 
So there's no, uh, there's no carbon dioxide in it? No additives, no preservatives, absolutely. It's as close you get to organic beer. Yeah. While pouring these traditional ales, I have to ask, is it true that the proper way to serve ale here is at room temperature? Really? That's definitely not true. <laughs> and it hasn't been for a long time? No. OK. OK, so there you have it. The next time someone tries to tell you that people drink beer at room temperature in the UK, <clears throat> tell them it's BS. Tell them you saw it here on Three Sheets. But enough on the finer points of it. <laughs> Out on the main strip, the mile is gaining momentum. I'm trapped here on a corner, and there's a bunch of milers eager to get their 15 minutes of fame. Batman. <laughs> Generic Batman, everyone. Coming up, can I get away from these people and get on with the mile? And after a night of many beers, I'll see if some cockles and lava bread ease the pain or create some mumbles rumbles in my stomach. The real deal here. Okay, so I'm in a village in Wales called Mumbles, and I'm trying to do the Mumbles Mile pub crawl. But as is the case with Welsh villages, word of mouth travels fast. And apparently, a lot of people know that a TV show is in town. Who, are you the guy that's traveling around drinking in bars? No. no, no, no is no. he here? No, he's, uh, he's down so at the- So why are you filming Obr him Obr Obr Why are you filming here if he's not true? Oh, look at him. <laughs> So are you guys doing the Mumbles Mile? Yeah. I, you know what? There was three of you. I turned around and then uh, there's about seven of you. No, when we're all one get the camera. Can you do me a favor? Can you guys each give me a word that means drunk no. in Welsh? Yeah. I'd say like. In Welsh. Oh no, no, not like Welsh. Just like a slang. Easy. Like I'd say smash or something like okay, that. Okay, I'm go. Blotto. Oh, that's a good one, blottoed. Oh, hissy eye. Steamsy. Tamiado. <laughs> what is that? Tronco. <laughs> I say steaming's a good one. Trolley eye. <laughs> Trolley eye. Do you know what I say? Steve McKenna. <laughs> Steve McKenna. <laughs> That guy's lo he's looking for you. He wrapped up his engine. I mean, he wants you. Yeah, we'll head off. <laughs> Just when I think I can move on to the next bar, along comes this lady. Oh, hey, Greta! All right. Hey, there she is, Mama! <laughs> oh, hey now! Hey now, he's a crash of red already! <laughs> Mama is legendary in these parts. Everyone knows who she is, and they know she tends to pop in out of nowhere and, well, grab your crotch. While she seems a little crazy on the outside, she gets a lot of respect around here because what she's actually doing is raising money for charity. I did over a million pounds for charity. Yeah, I heard about since that. Since I was 14. Yeah, there's 10 pounds for you. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank all right. You. Okay, so maybe she's no Mother Teresa, but it's all a means to a yeah. noble end. I'm a little afraid you're going to grab my nuts. <laughs> so I'm going to run. Careful! Careful! Careful with my nutsack. The more I get pulled aside out here, the more I realize that my chances of getting through the mile are narrowing. Why, why are you dressed up? Uh, we're not really dressed up. Oh, no, why, why, are, are, why are you up? not dressed up? We're not, we're not yeah. dressed up. This why is how we normally come out. OK, okay. whatever. Drink and let drink and mumble. It's time to It gets a little drunk here. It gets a little salty. It gets a little bit uh, scary. Speaking of scary, I'm scared that I'm running out of time. The bars close down around midnight, so I rush into the next pub just to up my pub crawl count. <laughs> this place is hopping, but the clock is ticking. Okay. <laughs> so I haul ass to the one and only Antelope. When in Mumbles, you absolutely must go here. This bar was a favorite watering hole for the one and only hard-drinking poet, Dylan Thomas. <laughs> He said, uh, an alcoholic is just a person that you don't like that drinks as much as you do. <laughs> That's Dylan Thomas said that. Do not show all these things. All is going well for me. I'm at my sixth pub and still going strong. But suddenly, my mumbles world comes crashing in. It's last call at the antelope, and I still need to squeeze in four more stops. OK, 
Okay, so does this place count? It's on the Mumbles Road and it serves big cans of beer. I'll get a beer. At this closing hour, I'll take what I can get. I'll just drink it right here. Well, this. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Ouch, why are you biting me? Put you down. While this was not the most outrageous episode, in fact, it's probably the most tame episode we did from my perspective. It was a good lesson for us to know that the show wasn't really about the drinks. It wasn't really about me. It was about the characters that we that we met. If you have a memorable scene from this show, it's because of the person that I was drinking with, not because of me or what we were drinking. So there you have it. Eight stops, if you count the Chinese restaurant and the garbage can, Time was my only enemy. And Mumbles, I assure you, I will be back to avenge this defeat. Even though I didn't get to 10 pubs, I drank a lot. When you host a TV show about drinking, bartenders are generous. And the next morning, I'm definitely feeling the Mumbles rumble. On that note, I have an appointment with this stuff, cockles and lava bread. With this guy, Dr. Mike. So what do we have here? Well, this is a real traditional uh, Gawa breakfast from okay. this part of Wales. Dr. Mike has a PhD in medieval Welsh history. Uh, you've got locally harvested cockles. Excuse and you? These oh. are cockles. It's a shellfish? It's a shellfish, yeah. It's a little shellfish. And they're, they're really good. OK, good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, good. And uh, what's that? No, that's lava bread. It's very unique to it looks part like, of Wales. It looks like lava. It doesn't look like bread at all. <laughs> it's actually seaweed. <laughs> You cook it with a little oatmeal. Okay. And uh, it goes really well with your, your cooked breakfast. It contains a heck of a lot of iron okay. and vitamins, so it's really good. You know what? I was told to be afraid of that. You like it? it it's, it's very good. It's so are these um, cackles. Cockles, yeah. Yeah, I like to call, <laughs> I like to call them cackles. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, they're just like little, uh, little mollusks. That's right, yeah. The rest of the breakfast is pretty basic. Bacon, eggs, sausage. And then um, half a tomato. Yep. <laughs> it's a tomato. T tomato. I was really thinking it was like kind of a, a nasty breakfast, and I for some reason thought it was a bit of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> that, that this was a hangover cure. But this uh, lava bread. How can it pop it? Lava bread. It's working already, I can see. I mean, it's delicious. Whatever you call it. Cockles. I just like saying it because it's a fun word. The traditional Welsh breakfast is actually quite good. <laughs> hey, get back here. I wouldn't say it cured my hangover, but it did help me forget about last night's defeat along the Mumbles Mile. That's good lava bread. <laughs> it's the best I've ever had. Of course, one thing I'll never forget is my Welsh drinking excursion. I've been to a brewery that's been making ales for over a century. I've had beers in a thousand-year-old pub and served the drink to the devil himself. And I experienced mumbles, complete with a woman willing to do just about anything for a good cause. Guys who wear costumes when they drink, and seven girls with seven different words for drunk. This place is definitely a worthwhile stop in my mission to experience drinks and the people who consume them. Wales, you got a great set of mumbles, lady. So I'm in Wales, where there's more castles per capita than anywhere in the world. We're not here to... Hello. Find a rich in the give her the word ferret. Yeah. And maybe chocolate. Who the f*** could have a That's a microphone. It's a boom. It's not going to hurt you, mama. Even though it didn't get too crazy from my perspective, I think that's a great episode. Um, this is the first time that you see Pleplius, which I'm, I'm gonna save that story for a later time. It's also the first real time that we get introduced to Steve McKenna, which I'm gonna save that for another time for an episode that he's actually in. The most interesting thing for me when shooting this show was that our fixer was a Welsh historian. And we had two vans. We had the, the van that the fixer was driving that had all the equipment in it. And then we had the crew van. The crew van was driven by Eric the sound guy. The van that I rode in was driven by our fixer. So it was just him and I. And I am, I'm a history buff, so I just asked him all these questions. And one of the interesting things that came up was, 
was the census of how they gave people last names in, in the United Kingdom. As it was told to me by him, the census takers would go out and get information on people like their last name, for example. But there were a lot of languages spoken other than English and the census was being done in English. So a lot of people didn't understand what the census taker was asking them. When asked for their last name, many people didn't have one. So the census taker would ask them, what is their father's name? Oh, my father's name is John. Okay, fine. Then you're Johnson. Your last name is Johnson. You're Bob Johnson or you're Williamson or Stevenson. You get the idea. Or the census taker would create a last name based on their occupation, like Baker or Smith or Cooper. The third way that people would get a last name was based on the town that they lived in. And that's where he told me my name came from, Lamprey. But I had always been told that we were French, that Lamprey was basically pronounced Lamprey. Hello, Zé Lamprey? Welcome back to France. But he tells me, no, your name is very Welsh. In fact, there is a town called Lamprey that we didn't get a chance to go visit. But when I came home and did research on it, sure enough, Lamprey is a Welsh name. And I found out that I'm Welsh, which means that's why I drink so well. Thank <laughs> you.